Hey folks, this is episode one of the Appalachian Roundup. We're talking about a report in the Virginia Mercury about new research that demonstrates the high rates of black lung and lung cancer in central Appalachia. The Virginia Mercury out of Richmond published a report on February 28, 2023 titled, A New Study Finds Central Appalachia Miners at Highest Risk of Dying from Lung Disease. You know, if you read the article closely, the real title should be probably something like Loose U.S. Mine Regulations Expose Miners in Appalachia to More Disease Causing Dusts, which kills them in disproportionately high rates. The article opens with this quote, Central Appalachian coal miners, including those in Virginia, are over eight times more likely than men in the general population to die from respiratory diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and black lung according to the recent research. The research they report about was done by two scientists at the University of Illinois, Chicago. They worked in conjunction with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The key findings of the study are probably not a surprise to people who live in Appalachia, but basically they boil down to this. After 2006, rates of coal miners with black lung started to go up. Um, and the most, it's the most severe forms of black lung called progressive massive fibrosis. And in fact, the study, or part of the study that was reported, um, cited a Congressional Research Service uh, study that was done in 2017. And this study showed that this, uh, the recent recording of black lung cases, the, the sharp uptick of black lung cases, um, is the highest it's been since the 1970s. A quote from that uh, report is, uh, is right here. In 2017, researchers discovered among coal miners, mostly living in Kentucky and Virginia, and served by three federally funded black lung clinics in Virginia, what may be the largest cluster of progressive massive fibrosis ever recorded the news article doesn't say what caused the largest cluster of black lung cases ever recorded. Um, the article does highlight how coal in Appalachia is um, deeper in the ground, and that means that coal miners have to dig through more rock, more dirt, and so forth to access that coal. Now, what that means is they are they end up breathing more what's called silica dust, and so just by digging through more coal, uh, I'm sorry, more rock to get to the coal, the silica dust is, is one of the things they breathe, and silica dust is a cause of cancer. And so by breathing either coal dust or this rock dust, the silica dust, um, basically it really increases the likelihood of you getting cancer or black lung. Um, and so, but, but that itself, the, the, the fact that Appalachian coal miners have to dig through more rock doesn't quite explain why you have this large cluster of severe black lung cases on the Kentucky-Virginia border. To sort of answer that question, you need to think about um, both government regulation as well as... Um, regulators. And so I think you have to look at what coal mine owners are allowed to get away with. And, and the answer to that question has to do with regulators. Um, so the article does kind of uh, suggest this. The article says at the last, at the end of it, at the, the last quote is, current U.S. standards allow coal miners to be exposed to double the level of silica as other workers although Federal Mine Safety and Health Administration is in the process of tightening those rules. Now, I've looked, and it's been some period of time, a number of years, that they've been trying to tighten those rules. Um, you know, there's a number of things that um, have kept the rules loosened, and I want to highlight two of them. Um, uh, they're basically two former presidents, one former president, uh, Donald Trump, and the other former president, George W. Bush, both presidents 
um, actively worked to deregulate a number of industries, but including, or I guess, and specifically because of what we're talking about here, the mine industry. So here's what I wrote up. The Trump administration went on a deregulation spree across a range of industries, including the coal mine industry. In February 2017, Trump repealed the stream protection rule. This rule required coal companies to, number one, restore streams and waterways damaged by mining activities. And also, it prevented coal companies from dumping coal and ash and other waste byproducts into the waterways. Okay, this became a political struggle, but ultimately, deregulation won the day. It was framed by Trump at the day of the signing as, as, a, as an end to a job-killing regulation. Now, the end of the stream projection rule in 2017 probably didn't cause someone to develop black lung, um, but it did contribute to the poison in the groundwater, you know. And, and so, again, uh, Donald Trump does this in 2017. A couple of years later, 2019, Newsweek comes out with an article. Um, this article uh, shows, especially dealing with arsenic and lead levels in drinking water around coal mines in West Virginia. And it shows that basically, you know, there is this, uh, there is this linkage between deregulation and poison groundwater. I've dropped the link in the, in the chat below. The point is that coal mine safety has to be a matter of adequate government regulation. The Sago mine disaster in Kentucky in 2006 is a good example, you know, to think about here. That disaster killed 12 miners. You know, it happened on the hills of the Bush administration initiating their deregulation strategy. Here's a quote from a January 2006 NPR article. Quote, direct connection between lax regulation and accidents may be hard to establish, but the Charleston Gazette and the Washington Post are among the newspapers that have reported a record of lenient enforcement at the Sago mine, which last year was cited 200 times for a variety of safety violations. It goes on to talk about the biggest fine it had to pay is $440. The de deregulatory attitude of the government was evident in the drop in referrals in all coal mines for possible criminal action from 38 to 12 last year. The Bush administration pursued a policy of forging a cooperative relationship between the mine operators and the safety uh, administration. Now, that cooperative relationship was effectively deregulation. Now, deregulation led to or at least set the conditions for the Sago mine disaster. Deregulation set the conditions for um, the sharp uptick in the number of black lung cases. And you see like the Sago mine disaster happen, you know, just as, as George W. Bush is moving to deregulate the mine, mine industry. And you see, um, as the research shows, the number of black lung cases starts to seriously go up in 2006. And this this, co this corresponds with George W. Bush's move to deregulate. Now, my point is that between George W. Bush and Donald Trump, the mine industry has largely or has been deregulated to such an extent that, I mean, these are some of the outcomes that you see. You know, it turns out to be good business for the mine owners, bad working conditions for mine workers themselves. Um, the outcome, you know, are dead miners and, and, and lots of profits. Because ultimately, when, when the government deregulates and doesn't adequately monitor and regulate the mine industry then the safety is put into the hands of the coal mine owners, the operators. And what that means is safety is put into competition with profit. And when profit is versus safety, I mean, you can imagine in many instances, if not all, then profit's going to win out over safety. So point is, I think we need to have regulated minds.
We need to have regulated, you know, rail lines. We need to have regulated, uh, you know, airline industry. We need these things not deregulated and certainly not um, a reactionary type of deregulation as, as the sort of like ideological goal. I think we need smart regulation and safety as one of our primary goals here. Uh, especially if we're talking about, uh, you know, coal mining. So if you like this type of comment uh, and commentary and focus on the news, um, look back here. We'll be producing uh, some more pieces in the next, uh, you know, hopefully aiming for two to three pieces per month. Uh, if everything goes well, maybe up to four pieces per month. Um, and we'll look for you back here. Uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you soon.